Hello everyone, Foley here, and we are back with another episode of the Semi Extreme One Chunk series. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you for the amazing support these past couple of weeks. The channel growth has been insane. My goal was to hit 1,000 subscribers before the end of the summer, and you all absolutely crushed it. I now have a lofty goal of hitting 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so let's see if we can make that happen. Also, shout out to all my channel members here on the screen for supporting me even further. If you would like to support me, me just as they are, hit the join button down below or click the link in the description of the video. I hope you all enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. Let's get started. In the last episode, I rolled my starting chunk, the Hunter's Guild, where I found out that I didn't have an access to a bank there, or I at least thought that was the case. I then proceeded to roll a chunk east of the Hunter's Guild where I achieved 38 thieving to pickpocket a master farmer and 58 cooking through chicken and sweet corn in order to bake a pita bread. Along the way, I did manage to acquire my best in slot weapon for the foreseeable future, the Mythal Scimitar, from a mystery box I received from the Quiz Master random event. Which leads me to rolling my new chunk, the Black Jaguar Peninsula, with the chunk task of getting mined and air runes from bandits in order to cast Wind Strike and to dig up an emerald for Rue Merald. After putting in the Mithril Scimitar as a weapon that we have in the Chunk Picker website, getting the Steel Scimitar is no longer a chunk task because it is not a best in slot for us anymore. Now I mentioned that we had to kill bandits in order to get mined and air runes, but let's look at them real quick. As we already know, they dropped the Steel Scimitar, which we don't have to get anymore. They also drop a Steel Longsword and a Steel Pickaxe. The Longsword is not something I'm looking for, but the Pickaxe is. Although it is not a chunk task now, I will need it in the future whenever I unlock a way to train the skill, which is potentially one chunk roll away just to the northeast of our new chunk. In addition to the air and mind runes that we are looking for, they also drop water and chaos runes. The last thing they can drop is herbs, but since I don't have a bank at the moment, or at least think I don't, I will not be able to keep any of the herbs. Now onto their stats. They are level 23 with a max hit of 4 and 27 hit points. With my current stats and gear, fighting one of them would more than likely use up all the food in my inventory. And my food is a long walk over here. The best food I have is chicken, which heals me three hit points per, and a faster alternative to the chicken is the sweet corn, which heals two hit points per. With not having great food at my disposal, I can kill two or three of them with one inventory of food at best before spending another five to 10 minutes getting stocked back on food. But I do have a solution flinching. Flinching involves getting an NPC into a safe spot while they are aggressive to you and attacking them once their HP bar disappears from the screen and immediately going back into your safe spot, repeating the process until they are dead. Our safe spots will be these bushes right here. Each bush can be a safe spot, but at the beginning of our trip, the best one is going to be this one until the 10 minute NPC aggression timer runs out. During these 10 minutes when you are flinching, another NPC could wander to you and aggro you, causing you to have to fight them instead. This is because when you are flinching, you are not considered in combat, thus making it eligible for other NPCs to attack you. This problem is easily avoided by simply waiting the 10 minute timer out, but I won't be doing this because I'm impatient. But this method will allow me to conserve my food to have the longest trips possible at the downside of only being able to attack once every 5 seconds, effectively making my attack speed 2 times slower than normal. But doing it this way will not only be faster, but it will be safer so that I can keep my hardcore status for just a little longer. And now that we got all that talk out of the way, let's go ahead and kill some fucking bandits. Cue the training montage. We got a steel pickaxe. I can wield it. I can't use it. No, I have to have level six. Whenever I do get level six, I'll have a steel pickaxe. And How rare is this nature talisman? Yeah, it's on the rare drop table. Oh, it's a one in 1,820. <laughs> okay. Well, we, we got ourselves a nature talisman, boys. Oh god.
There's the mind runes. We're done. Two mind runes. We got it at kill count 177. A little over the drop rate. Not too shabby though. We definitely did get quite a bit of combat skills. Level 29 attack, level 30 strength, and level 20 defense. And we also got 19 prayer and 28 hit points level. So that's a it's pretty nice. I guess I'm just gonna go ahead and cast this wind strike at one of these bandits and we'll call it good. There we go. There's our wind strike spell. We hit a big old one with it. Well, 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 would you look at me? Bad YouTuber not recording. But I did end up doing the whole Rue Merald digging up the emerald thing. Essentially, all you do is get a shovel and you go over to the wagons where the bandits are and you dig there and then it gives you an emerald and you talk to Rue Merald. He lets you keep the emerald. So it's uh, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. With that, this chunk is done. And we can now officially roll a new one. And without a bank, our inventory is pretty full. So I'm really hoping to get a bank on this chunk roll so I don't have to drop any of this. But if I don't, then I'm most definitely going to have to drop a lot of this stuff. But all right, we now have, I believe, two places where I can get a bank now. And that would be chunk number seven, which I have talked about before. And chunk number eight, which is the Cam Torm entrance. I don't think it has any requirements to enter Cam Torm them but inside there is a bank and there's a bunch of shops and there's some mining uh you can do and there's also the moon's apparel i will not be able to do the moon's apparel because i don't have the prerequisites to be able to complete that quest in order to do moon's apparel but maybe eventually in time we can go there because there is some really good armor and weapons that we can get from there let's go ahead and enroll a new one we're looking for number seven or number eight okay sunset fishing cove it looks like there's nothing to do down here let me go ahead and take a wander down there and see what it looks like and if there really is nothing to do then we can go ahead and roll another chunk all right so it looks like yeah this is a quetzal teleport which we don't have access to yet we got a well we got this big old jaguar hey a smaller jaguar too might be something we can train off of in the future we do have a fishing rod spot which could be used what does this lady have oh a fishing supply store Ooh. okay this is exciting this could be very useful in the future and these fishing spots over here what are they for shark and lobster it looks like okay well we don't have any other way to train fishing right now but once we do well catching a shark and getting the big shark is going to be on the to do task so yeah but i don't think there's really anything else to do in this chunk let's go right back to the chunk picker and uh roll us another chunk all right, same as before, we're looking for those two chunks, number six and seven now, the ones with the bank. Let's see what we get. <laughs> we get the Westworm Coast, which is like literally mostly ocean. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and look at that. I'm, I know there's pretty much absolutely nothing there, right? Let's go ahead and just take a look at it, make sure. All right, and we're, we're, we're here, and I actually just got so happy. Look at this. I did not know there was sand crabs in Varlamore, but we now have a three spawn sand crab place. This is going to be so amazing for whenever I want to AFK or just do some combat training. This is even huger than the mithril scimitar, I would have to say. If I had to compare the two, I think the sand crabs is much better to have than the mithril scimitar. But once I kill this sand crab, we'll go ahead and roll a new chunk and see what else we get. Oh yeah, bronze pickaxe. We already have a steel one, so it's not that big of a deal. All right, let's go roll that new chunk. Chunk. Come on, give me a bank. Please give me a bank. I need it. I need it. Hamtorum Path. Okay, that is a little bit north. Oh, it says mine a size 9 shooting star. Okay, so I told you in the beginning of the first episode that I would clarify things as they came up. Well, this is one of those things. All extreme one chunk men come along these issues and tackle them differently. Some may choose to go ahead and get the 90 mining for the highest tier shooting star. Some may choose to ignore shooting stars as a task completely. 
Some even make it a passive task. The way I will be doing it is for every new shooting star location I unlock, I will get the mining level to unlock the next tier star. So in this chunk, instead of getting the 90 mining, I will instead have to get level 70 mining in order to mine the Addy ore in this chunk, along with a tier 7 shooting star. This knocks the grind down from mining 152,684 iron ore to 21,007 iron ore. I don't mind going for level 90 or long grinds in general, but I wouldn't be able to make a video for y'all for months if that was the case. Let's be honest, mining isn't entertaining so I want to power through this chunk so more interesting things can be done sooner rather than later. And then I can use the shooting star as a means of AFK and passively leveling the skill instead of it being the only thing I can do. It is my account at the end of the day and I will do what I think's fun and right for me and I hope you understand that. But with that, let's go and take a look at our new chunk. But yep, uh, apparently there is a shooting star that like spawns like right here apparently so uh, we do have ourselves a steel pack axe and we got some tin, copper, iron, and adamant rocks. Uh, we, we got a lot of work to do. The only crappy thing is, is I don't have a bank. So pretty much everything that I have right here is uh, going to need to be dropped, unfortunately. Since we have access to that fishing shop, I'm going to drop the feathers. I want to keep the mime mask as long as possible. I'm going to keep the uncut rubies because they're noted. Dropping the steel scimitar, the potions I'm going to have to drop. Uh, I'm going to keep the mithril ore for now, drop the rainar weed. I want to keep the nature talisman just because it's such a rare drop. We're going to drop the mind rune, the gold bar, and I think I'm just going to drop all the runes besides nature runes and these chaoses, along with all these emeralds. I'm just going to have to drop them, give myself as much inventory space as possible, just so I'm not constantly dropping rocks. Yeah, I guess, uh, I guess we get to, I guess we get to work. But, uh, yeah, I do need to mine some rocks, but I have only the steel pickaxe right now, so I need to go get a bronze or an iron one from these sand crabs that I just unlocked, which it shouldn't take too long. It's about a 1 in 20, 1 in 25 rate. Like my brain just thought I was going to able to use this steel pickaxe off the rip whenever I got that bronze one. So I don't know why I dropped it, but you know, it is what it is. Oh, there we go. There's the bronze pickaxe. We should have just picked up the first one and kept it like a smart person would have. But I mean, it only took 10 kills to get the one that we had back. Not a big deal at the end of the day. I'm going to eat up to max and then drop the rest of this cod. But now we can officially start our mining journey. And there is the first mining level. Only 310 ore. And we got it level 2. And just like that, we are level 6. We can now use the steel pickaxe. We can drop the bronze pickaxe. You were good to us while we needed it. But you are of no use anymore. Alright, we are now level 12 mining. So that means we should be able to mine this only tier 1 shooting stars for now, but I'm going to be uh, on the OSRS portal shooting stars tracker, and anytime that I see a shooting star pop up, I'm just going to go for that because it's uh, a lot less click intensive and it can be pretty decent XP. Yeah, shooting stars are definitely going to be the way to go for the most part if they are available, but otherwise I'm going to mine this tin up for a little bit and then once I'm able to mine iron rocks, I'll probably start mining them. But shooting stars always the go-to, always the go-to. And would you look at that level 13 from our first shooting star? We love to see that. There is a level 15 mining. I can now officially mine some iron rocks. I'm not sure if this will be faster than Tim at the moment, but I'm just going to go ahead and try it and see how I like it. Okay, I, 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 I'm 10 seconds in. I already think it's going to be better. <laughs> Okay, so I was talking to some people in the One Chunk Clan, and they informed me that uh, this bank chest right by the bank. You see, the banker is like, "Oh, only guild members," and you're like, "Oh man, I need 4600." But there's this bank chest that I didn't even notice, and it lets you go right into your freaking bank. Like, that it it doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make any sense. I could have kept all my stuff, which I mean, at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. But like, 
That's huge. We have a bank. Oh my God, we have a bank. That is so awesome. I don't think I'm going to be banking uh, any of the ores really though, because that would just, I don't have the agility for it and it would just take way too long to uh, make the trips back and forth. So I'm, I'm not going to be banking for now, but like whenever I get a random event and get something, I can always go and bank that. It's going to be uh, very nice and useful for me in the future oh my god like that that is such a game changer huge shout out to oh source junk the man himself the owner of the clan confirmed it and uh, I, I went to go test it and it worked and i am so happy and there is the big level 50 it's been less than a day i'm currently on my main account i'm currently still on the chambers of Azeric grind i'm like logging out of this account during the day but i'm always scouting for a shooting star in this area and whenever there is one i'll log into the account um while i'm playing my main account and uh, afk the stars and when i get tired of raiding for the day i'll log into this account and i mine some iron ore do some active mining so yeah it's been a day and we're level 50 um which is a hundred thousand mining experience Okay, now that I am over level 60 mining, that means I have a 100% rate to uh, mine these iron ores. So I will never fail mining a iron rock, which is good. So I wanted to kind of measure out what an hour looks like for me in this particular spot. And it looks like we're 25 and a half thousand XP per hour, which actually is better than what I thought it was going to be. Because I mean, I haven't been looking at the XP per hour this whole time and until I measured it out right now. It's also a far shot, but I want to mention this just in case it ever does happen. But I can get hard clues from mining these iron rocks. I can also get the hard clues from mining the shooting stars. But in the chunks that I have available to me, I have two hard clues that um, are in those chunks. And I can do both of them. So there is a future where I could potentially finish a hard clue and within that hard clue casket there could be a rune pickaxe in there which would be absolutely huge but that is uh so far off because i think i need like five or six hard clues to be able to guarantee myself the hard clue casket and to get that many hard clues with the two steps that I have available to me is just astronomically low. But one can hope and that would that would honestly be freaking crazy. But the room pickaxe would be a huge upgrade because the steel pickaxe mines ores at a rate of every six ticks and then the room pickaxe mines at a rate of every three ticks it would take half the time to mine an ore and then if that would happen i could potentially incorporate this iron rock and this other iron rock to the west into my mining and i would be able to do uh, three iron mining Okay, I just did a maze random. We got some iron arrows, but most importantly, we got the chaos runes, 77 of them, and six more nature runes. That is actually pretty huge. And there is everyone's favorite number, level 69 mining, very nice. All right, we got a mystery box from the quiz master let's see what we get a tooth half key that's pretty useless for me and here we are with this iron rock mind we should hit level 70 there we go that is the mining level required to mine this adamant ore over here which i'm going to do right now and we can complete the chunk task off the list this doesn't complete the chunk however i do have to wait for a tier 7 shooting star to spawn in order to complete the chunk so after i get this done i need to wait for one to spawn which could take a while so in the meantime after this i'm going to train on some sand crabs until one spawns hey yeah let's go but there is our adamant ore mind we can check that off of the task as complete
Oh my god, okay. So I started at the top at world 302 and just kept going down and I finally find a tier 7 star at world 485. That was a, a lot of worlds to go through, but we can mine this tier 7 star, hopefully, and then we can complete the task and the chunk and we can go ahead and roll for a new one. Or are you gonna, are you gonna, are you gonna mine? There we go, there we go. Task complete. Ah, oh, yeah, that felt good. I was hoping someone would scout a star for me, but I, I stayed up like all night and uh, no one scouted one for me while I was at Sand Crabs. And then uh, I woke up this morning and there wasn't one done. So I just figured I'd go ahead and scout one for myself. And uh, yeah, it took a while, but I, I found it. Let's go ahead and roll a new chunk, see where we're at. Okay, it looks like the only new chunk added to the roll now would be number seven, and I don't believe there's anything there. Number one is still the most concerning with a level 82 farming uh, requirement to harvest a grimy torstal, and then we have number four, which is the hill giants, making us get a curved and a long bone. Other than that, there's not really much to do in the other chunks. I think, I think chunk five and three have a thieving requirement, but nothing too big. And chunk two is actually kind of interesting because this brings us to a charter ship, which would actually let us leave Varlamore and head to somewhere else, like maybe Corrind or wherever it could roll us. Two would definitely be interesting. I wouldn't mind the Hill Giants. I, I'm a little scared of number one. I'd like at least one or two more farm patches before that happens, but you know, it is what it is. But let's go ahead and roll the chunk and see what we get. The Outer Fortis Farms. The Outer Fortis Farms has a couple tasks that I will go over really quick. I now have access to a tinderbox, a knife, a chisel, and regular logs, which means I will have to burn a log, which is easy enough, it's only level one fire making. Next, I will have to train my fletching up to 41 through those logs in order to fletch pearl bolt tips in which we can get the pearl as a drop from the sand crabs that I unlocked earlier in the video. There was also a guard here, which means I will have to level up my thieving from 38 to 40 in order to pickpocket them. The guard's drop table has a new best in slot magic weapon being the iron dagger. They also drop iron bolts, so I will need to obtain them and also get 26 range in order to wield the iron bolts. There are also thieves here that have a new best in slot helmet on their drop table, the bronze med helm. This chunk also gives me access to a bowl, so I will need to get level 67 cooking in order to make a tuna and corn, the tuna being available from the fishing shop that was unlocked earlier in the video. And that's all the task for this chunk, but that is where I'm going to pick up on the next episode of the Simi Extreme One Chunk Man. If you liked the video, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss when I upload. Also, shout out to all my channel members listed here on screen. It really does mean the most. My name is Foley, and thank you for watching.